You thought baby rulers were gonna be safe? What's up guys? Out here in the lab where I usually do all my strength training. Today we're gonna talk about the mind. So this is gonna be the first video of probably a four part series on a mental training method that I created about two years ago. Uh, it's been extremely effective for me and everyone that I've taught it to. And it also drastically changed my quality of life and took me from being regretful and depressed and upset about my training when I couldn't do things to being in a state of basically perpetual fulfillment where I always just feel good about my training and I'm always happy and I'm always able to do what I think I can do. And if I can't do something, it's usually because I physically am just not able. And that doesn't really bother me because I can just go train until I am physically able. So uh, I think this is really important for a lot of the parkour community. I think there's a lot of people like me in the community that uh, didn't naturally have amazing mental game. I think there are a lot of athletes who experience daily what I used to experience where I would go out and I would see a jump and I would physically know that I could do it but mentally I couldn't commit for it and I would try and try and try and I would end up not doing it. I'd go home and I'd be regretting it and I'd be sad about it and I'd get depressed and I would just be disappointed in my own training. Um, so I think this method can help a lot of people who are experiencing that. I think the parkour community has a really big problem with a lot of athletes who have a ton of potential just being disappointed in themselves all the time um, and ending up sad and depressed and not wanting to do the sport that they love. And I really think that if we can show people a better path to progress their mental game, that we can pull some people out of this uh, disappointment with themselves and help them find fulfillment in their training and be happy and actually feel like they're living up to their potential. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. This first video is just gonna be going over the concepts that I use uh, in my training. I'm not gonna actually go and do any physical stuff today. I'm just gonna talk about the key concepts that we're gonna apply. Um, and then the next couple of videos, I'm going to show the actual methods that I use when I go out and train and how to apply these concepts that we're talking about today to the methods that I'm gonna show in the next videos. So concept number one we're gonna go over, progressive overload. Uh, some of you might know what progressive overload is, especially if you do any type of strength training. Um, just gonna read the definition for you. Uh, progressive overload is the gradual increase of stress placed upon the body during exercise. So what does this mean? Physically, if you come in here with me and you squat 300 pounds today, and that's your max, you can't pick it up more than one time, if we put 305 pounds on the bar, it crushes you. 300 is all you can do. You're not gonna come back in here tomorrow and squat 400 pounds. Just not gonna happen. It's not how it works. But the way it actually works is you're gonna be stuck at 300 pounds for two, three, maybe even four weeks, um, and you're gonna keep training, and maybe after a month you go up to 305 pounds, and then maybe you train another two or three weeks at 305 pounds, and then now you can do 310 pounds. You have to progressively overload your body from 300 to 305 to 310, and you're gonna keep doing that all the way up until you reach that 400 mark. So you're not gonna do 300 today and 400 tomorrow. You're probably gonna do 300 today and maybe 400 a year from now, maybe even a year and a half from now. So how does this apply to mental game and parkour? Uh, let's imagine I find a 12 foot running precision and I'm really scared of it and I can barely commit to it, but I do commit to it, but just barely. Um, but I'm terrified the whole time. So I did 12 feet. There's no way that if I was terrified of doing 12 feet, I'm gonna look over here at this 15 foot jump and then go do it. It's not gonna happen. I'm gonna be way too scared. Um, physically, I probably can. And this is the second concept we're gonna go into. So we're gonna bleed into the second concept here. The second concept is that you have a physical limit and you have a mental limit. Uh, most people in parkour physically could run pre probably 16 to 18 feet, if not more. Mentally, most people can't commit for that. So what happens here is we go out to we go out to train. I see a jump of 16 feet. Physically, I feel like I can do it. This is when I'm looking at a jump. I'm going, I know I can do this. I know I can do this, but I can't commit. Why can't I commit? Because when I do a 12 foot running pre, I'm terrified. I'm not going to do a 12 foot running pre and be terrified, and then go over here to a 16 foot one and just jump levels and do that. It's not going to happen. It's the same thing as me picking up 300 pounds on a squat maxing out and then getting crushed at 305 and then trying to do 400, it's not gonna happen. So what do we have to do? We have to progressively overload the mental game. Physically, we can already do the 16 foot jump, but mentally, we have to build ourselves up incrementally. My body doesn't really need to be progressively overloaded, but my mind, I need to progressively move up from 12 feet 
a couple inches, 12 feet, three inches, 12 feet, four inches, 12 feet, five inches. And I need to do that over time until mentally I'm prepared to go 16 feet. Um, so Callum posted recently a similar concept, basically the same concept, but he uses an analogy that I like better instead of the physical and mental. He talks about a physical being a big circle and your mental limit being a small circle. So our goal with these methods that I'm gonna go over here um, in the next couple of videos is to take our mental limit, which is this little circle, say this is a 12 foot running pre that I'm terrified of, and then say we have a 16 foot running pre that I know that I physically can do. I wanna take this 12 foot uh, running pre mental circle and I want to slowly progressively grow it 12 foot 3 inches, 12 foot 6 inches, 12 foot 8 inches, 13 feet, 14 feet over time keep building up until my physical limit and my mental limit are exactly the same. Once I match up my mental limit with my physical limit um, I no longer have to go out and see a jump and go alright this is a 16 foot jump I know I can do this why can't I commit. Instead my physical limit is 16 feet my mental limit is also 16 feet because I've progressively built up my mental game to this level. So now I want to go out and train. It's no longer a question of can I commit or not. Now it's a question of physically, can I do it or can I not? So I walk up to a jump, I go, this is 16 feet, I can do it. Mentally, I can do it, I go for it. I see a jump at 17 feet, I go physically, I can't do this. Uh, I'll come back when I'm more powerful and I can do it. Now that I've kind of gone over this mental limit and physical limit concept, I want to talk about why I think this is really important to make available to the community because I am someone who had a large physical limit compared to my small mental limit throughout the majority of my training career and I think more people in parkour are like me than they are say someone like Jimmy who started out with a very large mental limit with and a smaller physical limit. So you have your you have people like Jimmy in the world and you have people like me in the world and so when Jimmy started training um, he could pretty much just commit for things, but he didn't have the technique or the experience yet. So you would point to a challenge and Jimmy's mental limit was here. He would, he would just go, he would just do it. Physically, his limit was probably a little bit below his mental limit. So sometimes it wouldn't work out very well. Uh, sometimes he didn't have the tech for it. Sometimes he just didn't have the experience to know how to work it out. Um, over maybe six months, to a year of training, he started to really develop the technique, and then after about two years of training, his technique and physical body had really caught up to where his mental was. So once he once he got clear of that, he was good to go. He was just crushing every single challenge. So if you if you're someone who starts out with large mental and small physical, um, just having some experience training and learning the technique and building up your body a little bit will pretty much put you in the perfect position to be lined up perfectly. Physical limit here mental limit right here next to it, you're ready to go. I think there are a lot more Caleb's in the world, a lot more people who physically can do things but mentally have a hard time committing for it, and that's really hard to overcome. Because if, if you already have the mental game, just build your body up, you're good to go. If you don't have the mental game though, you could just be stuck for years, you could be stuck for a long time. And this is something that I wish I figured out 10 years ago when I started training. This is something I only figured out maybe two, two and a half years ago, and it's completely changed my entire life and training basically. So the second part of this series is going to tie in the progressive overload with the mental and physical limit more. We're going to talk about how to set something up so that if mentally you can only commit for say a 12 foot jump but physically you can go 16 feet. We're going to set something up that's 12 feet and then we're going to move maybe two or three inches in a day and then two or three inches the next day and then two or three inches the next day and we're going to do that over weeks and months and then all of a sudden you're going to see that your mental limit and physical limit are practically the same and you're just looking at jumps and going. All right, so the second concept we're gonna talk about is something I learned in a book called Flow, which I'll try to link or direct you to in the description. Um, and I'll also put this chart that I'm looking at in the video. Uh, basically, we have a spectrum um, of anxiety and boredom, and we wanna be right in between at all times in our training. So this could be physically or mentally. Um, but we're going to look at mental right now. So let's go back to the same example. Physically, I can do a 16 foot running pre. Mentally, I'm only capable of committing at 12 feet. So let's say I find an 8 foot running pre, which most people could probably do standing. If I find an 8 foot running pre and I'm sitting here drilling it, it's too easy. It's not challenging enough. It's down in the boredom category. So it's not going to push me to progress to an another level. If we jump over here to the 16 foot running pre, 
it's four feet beyond what I mentally am ready to do, which is 12 feet, right? So if I'm trying to jump mentally four extra feet, it's just not going to happen. There's so much anxiety and so much stress on my mind that I'm not even going to be able to commit for it. So what do we want to do to progress every day in our training, whether physically or mentally? Um, what we want to do is we want to go, if we're talking mentally, what we want to do is go to the point where we're really scared, but we can still commit. So let's say mentally my limit has been at 12 feet. I'm pretty scared at 12 feet, but I committed and I drilled and I drilled and I drilled. I'm feeling okay with it. What do I want to do now? I want to find a jump that's just barely further, maybe 12 feet, three inches, maybe 12 feet, four inches, possibly all the way up to 12, 12 and a half feet. Probably not going to go too much more than that because what we want to do is I want the jump to scare me. I want it to be very challenging, but I want to be able to commit. So if I jump all the way up to say 13 feet or 13 and a half feet when I was really scared at 12 feet, if I go to 13 feet now, it's probably going to be really scary. It's going to be hard for me to commit and it might be so hard for me to commit and so scary and so anxiety inducing on my mind that I never commit for it. We don't want that. We want to go somewhere up to maybe 12 and a half feet where there is anxiety and there is stress and it is challenging, but I can still do it. And then once I do it, I'm going to drill it and drill it and drill it and drill it. And slowly the anxiety and the stress is going to go away. And then eventually this 12 and a half foot jump is going to fall down into the boredom category. It's, it's going to become boring. And once that's boring, I'm going to move up again, maybe to 13 feet. And now since 12 and a half feet has become boring, 13 feet is going to be with the new level that induces anxiety and stress and it's scary and it's challenging, but I can still commit for it. And then when I commit for it, I'm going to drill that until it becomes boring. And I'm going to repeat this process. And eventually, I'm going to move up to, to 16 feet. And then once I get to my physical limit, I'm going to drill that to the boredom category. And now I can just operate at my physical limit. I don't have to think that much anymore. Um, and you can do this physically too. Physically, when you find challenges, you want to find a challenge that is hard enough that it pushes you, but not so hard that you can't even do it. And... We're not going to go too much into the physical stuff. I really want to focus on mental, but that's the general idea of this whole concept. So the last concept that I'm going to talk about, which is also going to be the fourth video in this series, it's going to be the last method I go over, um, is continually creating a new standard for your training. So say today I go out and my level of training is here, right? Wherever this is. I find a jump or a challenge that's right here. It's slightly in the anxiety side of the anxiety boredom spectrum. Um, so I'm a little bit scared of it, it's challenging, it's hard and, or scary, or both of those things. Uh, how am I gonna commit for it? I'm gonna figure out, I'm gonna break it down into to pieces. If it's a big challenge, I'm gonna get through each piece. Uh, maybe if it's a big scary jump, I'm gonna run and do a couple test jumps to it. I'm gonna figure, I'm gonna do whatever I need to do to get through this challenge. Cause this right here, here's my level, here's where this challenge is. But I'm gonna complete it today because it's, far enough down in the anxiety side of the spectrum that I can still commit for it even though it's scary or hard. Um, so I'll commit for it and then what am I going to do? I'm going to drill it, drill it, drill it, drill it. I'm going to try to push it down, push the anxiety side down into the boredom spectrum. Um, and then when I come back tomorrow, what's really going to establish a new level for me, my level was here yesterday and this is where the jump was. So now it's a new day. This is the level I want to be at. I don't want to be down here anymore. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to test this jump. I'm not going to run and do a bunch of test jumps anymore. I'm not going to break down all the pieces anymore. I'm going to warm up my body however I warm it up. And then I'm going to start off, not at my level that I was yesterday, I'm going to start off with my level that I, am, that I achieved yesterday. I'm going to start off at my new level. This is my new standard. So I'm not going to warm up to this challenge by doing a bunch of test jumps. I'm just going to go and do it. This challenge is my warm up. So I'm going to do it now. And then because I start with this challenge, my level goes from here to here. This is my new level. And I'm going to do it every single day until this challenge becomes so boring that I can just walk up and do it without thinking about it. And then once I achieve that, it's time to find another jump that's a little bit higher. Here's my level. Here's my new jump. Complete this challenge. Drill it into boredom until you get here. Now you have a new standard. Find something higher than your standard. Complete it. Drill it until this is your new standard. And just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Um, that's the last concept we're going to go over. That's going to be in the last video. I'm going to show some examples. I'm going to show some examples of all these uh, different concepts and how to apply them. Uh, yeah, that's all. So make sure to watch on the channel. I'm going to try to get 
one of these videos out every week if I can. It's kind of difficult because I don't really like sitting down here talking to the camera. I feel like I start ranting and rambling about all kinds of stuff and get all sidetracked, but I'm going to try to do it all. Uh, eventually it's all going to come out, so just watch for it. All right. <laughs>